So, you have a paper to write, and you need to find information about your topic. The information is out there in different types of documents, books, articles, websites, and more. But there's a problem. Many of these sources are not appropriate for your paper. Some of them are irrelevant, some of them are outdated, and some of them are just plain wrong. Your job is to distinguish between the good sources and the bad sources. This can be tricky, but here's a tool you can use to help. It's called the CROP test. No, not CRAP, CROP. It's an acronym. It stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. These are the characteristics of good sources. Let's talk about what each one means. First, currency. Currency is how current or new a document is. If a document is too old, it might not cover recent discoveries. So, how current does a document need to be? Well, it depends on two things. First, is this a science topic or a humanities topic? The sciences change rapidly. If you're writing about a science topic, you have to find recent documents in order to keep up with new information. The humanities change more slowly. A document in the humanities can be useful even if it's several decades old. The social sciences are in between. Second, is it a historical document? Historical documents are valuable because they're old. They provide first-hand reports of historic events. They don't need to be current. Next is relevance. If you're writing about Shakespeare, a book about dolphins is not going to help you. Even if it's the best book ever written about dolphins, it's irrelevant. So the document needs to be about your topic. But even if it is, it can still be irrelevant if it's not written for an audience of scholars. For example, the magazines at grocery stores are irrelevant because they're written for the general public, not for scholars. Authority. Who's the author? How do we know that the author is an expert? It's hard to tell at a glance, but here are some things you can look for. Does the author have a degree in his or her field? Is the author affiliated with a university? Is there a list of other publications by the author? An author doesn't have to have all of these things to be an authority, but you'd expect to see at least some of them. If you don't see any of these things, try Googling the author's name. You can learn a lot about an author from his or her webpage. Okay, accuracy. Some documents are not accurate, or in other words, wrong. Sometimes it's easy to spot the mistakes. But some mistakes are more subtle, and you might not spot them. If you're not sure whether a document is accurate or not, a good rule of thumb is to look for citations. Citations show where the author got the information. You can go straight to the source and see what it says. Finally, purpose. Why did the author create the document? Some documents are created to inform or educate their readers. Those are the documents you want to find. But other documents are created for other purposes. Some are meant to be entertaining. Others are opinion pieces or propaganda. And a lot of authors, especially on the web, are trying to sell you something. If you're having trouble determining the purpose of a document, look for these clues. Where was the document published? In a journal? A magazine? A newspaper? A book? And what tone does the author use? If authors have an academic purpose in mind, they'll write in a formal tone. If they have some other purpose in mind, they might write in an informal tone. So, currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. Crop. 
These are the differences between a good source and a bad source. If you have any questions about the crop test or about any other part of the research process, just ask a librarian. They'd love to help.